Today, I would like to welcome you to the sixth video in a six part series, which will show you the absolute best way to capture, edit, and then upload game clips to YouTube in the highest possible quality, so they come out looking just like the clips from the professional YouTubers out there that we all enjoy watching so much. We'll be capturing game clips in 1080p, 60fps, both with and without chat recording, using a laptop and the Elgato HD60 capture card. I'll be showing you how to do a fast, high quality edit and explaining which settings to use to render those game clips out in Sony Vegas and then covering how to upload those same clips to YouTube using custom thumbnails, tags, descriptions and titles that you need for a professional result. In the sixth and final video, I'll be showing you how to upload your clips to YouTube in the highest possible quality, as well as how to make and add sick thumbnails, a relevant title and description and a couple of other tips that I've picked up along the way that will help your video rank as high as the content will take it. Straight up, if you watch this six part series from start to finish, you're gonna know everything you need to about game capturing, editing and uploading with various setups to get some legit results. So stay locked, ask any questions or request tutorials in the comments below, crush that like button, and yeah, I hope it helps. What is currently happening YouTube? Facepalm here, your friend in Oz and NZ, bringing you reviews, tutorials, and game clips, minus the sh you can follow me on Twitter at Facepalm with a one, not an L. As for here on YouTube, if you like what you find, then like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to bring your game face. Let's get it done. So in the first video, I ran through the lineup of every video in this series. Instead of going through that again, you can just click one of the links on screen to take you to the other videos should you need them. I do recommend though that you watch these videos in order to get the most out of them, as the setups in the later videos rely on the setups in the videos that come before them. So let's get straight into part six uploading game clips and tutorials to YouTube, highest quality, sick thumbnails, titles, descriptions, tips and tricks 2016. So in the other five videos in the series, we learned how to set up all our hardware and software and how to use the HD60 and Sony Vegas to create what should now be a finished video. So let's upload it to YouTube and start generating some subscribers, views and comments. So at this point, make sure your title is finalized and that it's a good title. How do you make it good? Well, for one, you want it to contain the relevant keywords that people would search for on YouTube and Google when they are looking for a video just like yours. So put yourself in their shoes. If you were looking for a particular video, what would you search? Let's say we want to search for a video that tells us how to get the PS4 controller working with the Gear VR and a Samsung S6. Well, I made one of those videos and the title I used was Get PS4 Controller with Gear VR and Samsung S6 Working, and then in brackets, how how-to tutorial. Because when I was searching Google, I was asking, how do I get the PS4 controller working with the Gear VR S6? So the keywords here are PS4 controller, Gear VR, S6, and how do I? So I put the main keywords in the first part of the title so that people scrolling through YouTube could see them pop up. I also added the word tutorial because that's another keyword people might search. Don't be shy to make the titles a little bit lengthy if you want, as the more keywords in the title, the better. Just make sure that the main keywords are at the start of the title, so people on mobile devices can see these words when scrolling through their video search results, and also make sure that they're not spammy, because uh, Google and YouTube don't really like that sort of thing. Once you've finalized a good title, consider the description. When someone searches on Google for a topic, Google search algorithms will trawl the internet looking for relevant keywords amongst other things. And those keywords can also be contained within the description of your video. So the more relevant keywords in your description, the better. Just be aware that if your description again is very spammy or it uses a whole lot of irrelevant words, uh, all the same words are repeated constantly, this can actually damage your video's rankings and piss people off which can lead to dislikes. So if you have a look at the description of my videos, you'll see almost the same layout on all of them. Feel free to copy my description and change the words to suit your video and channel. Uh, just keep in mind that what you have at the top of your description is what people will see below each video before they expand the description. So think about carefully what you want here as a lot of people won't click on the description anyway. So make it count. 
I wanted my name with my catchphrase to stick in people's heads and I also wanted to generate followers to my Twitter account more than anything else at this stage. So as you can see, that is what is at the top of my description. If you expand my description, then you'll see I have other relevant links that were mentioned in my video than the actual description of my video, which you may notice waffles on a little bit, but still contains relevant keywords and it still makes sense. So it, it won't be marked as spam. Uh, then I have timestamps that people can click on to go to a specific part of the video, then I list what gear I use. I list the gear I use for two reasons. One, because I back what I use and I want people to use it as well. And two, because those are more keywords. And as this is a gaming channel and those are gaming keywords, this will help my video rank higher again. Uh, another place where your keywords are especially relevant is the tag section. So here you want to add all the keywords that you can think of that are relevant to your video. Make sure you're using relevant tags though. If you use tags that don't relate to your video, for example, if you were to use Samsung Galaxy S7 on a Black Ops 3 clip just because Samsung Galaxy S7s are a popular topic at the moment, then people will dislike your video because it's not what they wanted to see. A more realistic example would be if you put uh, a clip up with the title and tags like MLG Full Call of Duty Finals 2016 and all the video contains is you talking about why you like Call of Duty in general. This is not a good idea as people will react negatively. You may think that this is fine because it gets you the views, but they're not real views and people won't return to your channel. And this will also damage your standing with YouTube, which isn't going to help you at all. Keep it real, be creative, and you'll do a lot better. Now we've got the title, description, and tag sorted. The other thing that is really going to make your video pop is a custom thumbnail. Think about it. If you're scrolling through videos to watch on YouTube, if you see a sick thumbnail, it's going to get your attention more than some generic screenshot. And it gives the impression that this person took their time to make this thumbnail, and it suggests that they know what they're doing. So you'll be more likely to click on that video. So how do we create sick thumbnails? Well, you can do it in Sony Vegas by layering pictures or in Microsoft Paint, um, but what nearly everyone uses is Adobe Photoshop. If this software is too expensive for you, then there is Photoshop Essentials, which will do the job nicely. Here is one of my thumbnails, which we'll use as an example. So there is a trick to making good thumbnails, and that is to copy the layout of thumbnails you like already on YouTube. Is that cheating? Fuck no, it's using your head. Graphic design is based on inspiration, so copy a layout and use the inspiration it gives you to alter its layout and make it your own. So for thumbnails, you are generally going to want .png files, and there are a few main elements to a decent thumbnail. The first is a background, so get a decent background. Do this by going to Google Images and typing background.png or textures.png or searching for keywords. For example, carbon fiber texture.png or something. Uh, it doesn't have to be a super high resolution image as it's only going to be a tiny little thumbnail. Once an image comes up you like, right click it and save it to your desktop and load it into Photoshop. One thing I would say that it's a good idea to link the creator of the image in your video description, especially if it's not a stock or free image for your personal use. Uh, you can also get some ridiculous graphic packages from Face Studio. Uh, search Face Studio on Twitter. Now the next element we need is big ass standout fonts. So there are a few fonts that I use frequently like Impact, Helvetica and American Captain. And you'll see these on a lot of thumbnails in bold. To find all the fonts you'll ever need, go to dafont, that's D-A-F-O-N-T dot com and have a browse. The best thing to keep in mind when looking for thumbnail fonts is you want something simple and clear that is easy to read at a single glance. If you have complicated fonts on a thumbnail, then people won't be able to read it while they're scrolling and they'll just keep on scrolling straight past your video. So once you have what you need, place your font on top of your background and work around that. Add a couple other little images if you need, but keep it as simple as possible. What a lot of pros do is place a background, then take a photo of them doing a oh my gosh pose, uh, whatever, then they cut that out, place it on the background with an explosion PNG, and then drop big fat fonts on top of it. Uh, also, color can give a great finish to your fonts. So to give your font a cool color in Photoshop, right click on the text box on the right side and choose blending options. Go down and choose gray gradient overlay, then click this box and choose gradient. Then you can click these little arrows down here to change the color of your gradient. Once you've got your colors, uh, then you can then slide them left and right 
to change the balance. I would definitely recommend using either bright or light colors here, like yellows, pinks, purples, and greens, and stay away from darker colors as they are a lot harder to read when scrolling through videos. Also, white font is a very safe and effective way to go. Uh, once you have your colors set, add an outline by clicking the stroke box, and you can change the size of the outline with this slider here, and the color with this here. Uh, you can also add your brand to your overlay if you want, and once you're happy, save the whole thing as a JPEG, and back out uh, in YouTube on the Upload tab, click the Customize Thumbnail box and select the thumbnail that you created. Also, while we're here, use this box to instantly send out a message across all your social media accounts that you have linked with your YouTube channel once the video goes live. And on that note, make sure your Twitter account is linked so that when you like your own video, it will post to Twitter that you liked it. I found that people react to this quite well because generally speaking, you're only gonna like a video that you actually like. So it is less likely to come across as spam. Again, keep it real and you'll do better. Uh, and that's it for the upload part. Once your video is uploaded, we want to add annotations. So go into your video uh, once it's live and click this little annotations box. So what we want here is to turn our subscribe button into a clickable links button that redirects people to your channel to see more of your videos. And the same thing for video thumbnails we created like the ones at the start of this video with the six tiles that link you to every other video in the series. So come over here and choose add annotation and choose spotlight. Click this paint can icon and choose the bottom right option which will prevent a border on your clickable link. Or if you want a border, you can experiment with the other options. Now click this link box and paste the link to your video or channel that you want it to link to. Once you've done that, locate the spot in the video you want your clickable link to be. So here I'll look for the subscribe button location. Uh, and I'll use these sliders to move your new spotlight clickable link along the timeline to where you want it. Uh, then come up to the video itself and drag this box around so that it sur surrounds your subscribe button. Now click apply changes and when you go into your video, you'll see that when the video reaches the subscribe button, you will be redirected to your channel where people can see more videos or subscribe. This process is known as a call to action as it calls people to the action of subscribing to your channel. At this point, you can also add transcripts, um, but I haven't really seen any positive results from adding these, and they can be quite fiddly and take a lot of time, so I, I just leave them out. And now that your video is live, there is a couple of things that can help to get it ranking higher in people's searches, and therefore generating more views. One thing you can do is share it. Share it on your social media, ask your friends to share it, um, but don't spam people constantly, as they will just get annoyed and either dislike it or block you. Be active on your social media accounts when you are not sharing your videos, and when you do share a video, it will get more views. Don't expect your videos to take off straight away, Building a channel is a slow burn. You accumulate followers over time with good content and engaging with people. Your subscribers are real people. Treat them like real people. If they ask for your help or comment on your video, then reply to them. Don't be a fuckwit, man. If someone blanked you in real life, if you asked them a question, you'd be pissed. Um, I'd be pissed. Be engaging, be real, and where you can, um, also be entertaining. Uh, another thing that will help your video do well is the amount of time that it gets watched. If your video video gets a hundred um, two second views because you use the dodgy title and tags to get people to uh, view your video but it's actually shit and nothing to do with the title it won't go nearly as far as one view where a person watched it for five minutes straight YouTube will rank your video higher if people watch it for longer so again be real Give people what they want to see, what you would want to see, and don't crap on about boring shit unless it's entertaining or informative. Keep people engaged and you'll do better. Another thing you can do is pair up with other YouTubers. Find other channels of a similar size and strike a deal with them. Ask them to watch your videos and drop a like when you upload them, and in return, do the same for them. Ask them to share the video if they like it on their social media, but again, don't spam them, saying... I uploaded a new video, like it and share it. It makes you sound like a fuckhead, but asking them, hey mate, if you like the video, could you share it please? Uh, that will get you a lot further. For me, I get daily messages saying, like my video, or comments that come out of thin air that say, 
check my channel. My initial response is, why should I? I can find the content I want on YouTube at any time of day. Why should I check your videos just because you jumped on my video to tell me to do something? Again, be real, be engaging, and you'll do a lot better. It's a slow burn. Don't spam people and expect good results. Instead, be legit and get good results. Also, one of the main things you can do to help your videos do well is to have your videos linked on other people's websites. So tutorials definitely do well here because random websites will pick up your video tutorial and paste it on their pages to help their viewers. And tutorials are much more likely to get shared around forums where people are trying to figure out how to do things. So if you make Call of Duty quick scoping videos, that's all good. But chuck in a Call of Duty tutorial or two that will get shared on some forums and Google and YouTube. YouTube, uh, and they will eat that shit up and your videos will definitely rank higher. And speaking of forums, a very solid piece of advice is be active on forums. Use the same username that you do on YouTube and get amongst it. People will recognize your username over time and they will put the two together and remember if you're helpful or if you're a dick or if you're funny or annoying or if you're professional and all of that. Which brings me to my final tip. Be professional. If you want to do this as a career, it's the same as any other business. Think about what you say to people. Help people where you can and be professional. If you want a company to pick you up for sponsorship, they aren't going to sponsor someone who talks like a retard. They just won't want to deal with you. In the same token, they won't want to pick up people who abuse others online constantly or who have a really bad temper. Why would they? If I owned a company, if you owned a company, would you hire someone with a shit attitude? Do you think they will? No. Again, be real, be engaging, be entertaining and be professional. You can still give people shit or shoot people down if they're having a go, but have a look at how the pros do it. Um, and just be aware of what you can and can't get away with personally. If you're naturally funny, then be funny. If you're not, then don't try too hard because it's difficult to watch, which can actually be funny, but sometimes it can just be a cringe fest that you don't want to buy another ticket for. Just be you and people will relate. If you're a complete dickhead, then maybe consider another line of work. Unless you're a dickhead that makes people laugh, then do that anyway. Uh, and that's basically it for this entire series. At this point, you should have all the tools you need to create some seriously good game clips or tutorials or whatever content you want with your Elgato HD60, a game console, a microphone or two, maybe some headphones and some cheap software. And you'll have the know-how to get them up on YouTube and doing well. So go forth and crush it out there. Keep me in mind when you're famous and if you have any questions, then hit me up in the comments below and I'll try help out where I can. And on on that note, good luck and I hope this has helped. Peace. Thanks for watching today's video. Just remember you can follow me on Twitter at Facepalm with a one, not an L. As for here on YouTube, if you like what you find, then like, comment, and subscribe. But don't forget to bring your game face. Facepalm out.